Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. influence and self-regulation are a delicate but necessary balancing act. If it's not governed from within, then it ought to be imposed from without. I'm saying your ego, your enemy. There's a virus that's more contagious than coronavirus, deadlier than Ebola, and that virus is egocentrism. The belief that without you or I, something would collapse, that's the original lie. No man or woman, for that matter, is indispensable. After all, are you God? But then isn't that the lie that the ego virus tells us? That we by ourselves are godlike in our relevance. As one Father's Day has come and gone, let fathers, mothers, and potential parents, mentors, and even godfathers learn this lesson that has been forcefully taught the world over. That just as a baby lives in its mother's womb, leaves and stands alone, with the independent choice as to whether to associate or acknowledge that biological incubator or not, so too the seat of power, influence, even mentees cannot be held down, even if you clasp it with the suffocating grip of a dictator. No condition is permanent. If you like, shout yourself hoarse with cries of, after all I did for you, and I brought you into this world, therefore I can take you out again. <laughs> that too is a lie and it cannot stand. The chickens must leave the roost. Life will move on without you and without me. Shun the psychophants who fan the flames of your egomania, telling you how great you are. They hate you, really, or they will tell you the truth, that actually the good of the collective will always be greater than that of the individual. And therefore, it's the individual that should sacrifice for the collective, not the other way around. All such aberrations are fated to fail. Briefly, or ever so briefly, Let's consider the costly Obaseki Oshomole feud, which most impartial people would attribute to ego. It's apparent that this is an amplified version of what happens daily in the halls of power, resulting in a few holding the many to ransom. Now you must see why we need to enforce transparent systems to checkmate this unproductive counterculture in the public space. Now back to our private space. As we pass the milestone of another Father's Day, let's uphold and celebrate true sacrificial fathers who have developed or at least worked towards developing an immunity to the enemy virus called ego. To some extent, you know, if you look at um, um, this uh, thing called ego, you know, starting from um, the way we view leadership in Nigeria, you know, it, rather than see it as um, opportunity to lead and serve. We see it as opportunity to be served and worship. And so it breeds um, egocentrism, where you now begin to see yourself as above every other. And because of the poverty, maybe, you know, in the society, people, you have psychophancy. Psychophancy is one great breeder of, of um, ego. Everybody believes, oh, without you, um, you know, the world will come to a standstill. Check all the presidents you've had in Nigeria today. All of them, none of them was prepared. They always went to them to say, come and lead us, come and serve. And then they get there. Abacha, if you remember, everybody told him, without you, the nature, nation will collapse. The same thing they have been telling Buhari, the same thing they told Gulag Jonathan, even Obasanjo. But, like um, Ekene has said, this can be checked if only you look at yourself, that's the man in the mirror, and tell yourself, look, mm. when I live here with these same people, still say this of me, or 
what happens to those that have left before me. And so my, my position here should be about service to the people. I should take myself up. And I also use myself as an example to quickly round up. Sometimes there are some places I get to my friends are like, ah, don't you know who you are? Hey, what are you doing? I say, forget, oh, I'm nobody. So these are the people that will make you somebody. Relate with both the high and mighty. And then that's the only way you can truly, you know, render a service to humanity. Forget about self. And that's, I, I quite like the advocacy. And um, I thank um, you for reminding us of, um, you know, consistently looking in the mirror. It's just that sometimes, thank you. you know, reduce the big, big grammar so that the man on the streets <laughs> can be. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, um, I think really people in, especially in Nigeria, I can really just mainly speak for Nigerians. Um, I've noticed how the man on the lower uh, level of the ladder uh, looks up to the guy above him. And not only that, what he hopes is that when his time comes, he will emulate precisely what that man has done. So I've noticed that, you know, especially even just my staff, my everyday staff, I've noticed that whenever they're given any ounce of power, you know, whether it is to stop somebody from entering a particular room or whatever it is, boy, the way they take it up is on another level. It's almost like they, they really take it on as if they are the boss and everything. They go power mad just for that little bit of power. So, um, I think, like Libora said, you know, poverty is uh, really the catalyst for this whole ego-centric behavior. Um, because if you're poor, um, you're, you're basically going to be looking up to people who aren't poor, just so that you can get what they can get. And also maybe hope to emulate. I mean, I'm not saying everybody's like that. I know I'm not like that. Libora has just expressed it's not like that. But the general populace, from what I have seen, when they get there, the, the saying is, uh, when you get there, won't you do the same? That's usually what we hear. You know, we, we sit here and we talk about how we're not going to chop. But most people say, uh, when you get there, you're not going to chop. Which I you know, see. So it's actually expected behavior. And um, if you, it's, in some I cases, you don't behave like you, that. Yeah. And you're not a big madam and you're not a big mat. So um, I think we really have to change our way of thinking and realize that um, good character um, comes with doing away with your ego and thinking about, you know, thinking for the greater good. I, th I think the problem with us here in Nigeria um, is that we tend to measure ourselves against other people, uh, which you don't find in more developed countries. I nearly said um, civilized countries. Yeah, but I suppose, I suppose uh, in, a, in a saner place, yes. Um, that's, that's basically what causes, that's one of the major and root causes of the problem. You don't need anybody to affirm or reaffirm what you are. And um, if you just live your life for yourself, then you, you will not have an ego. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And that's why when the so-called lower rung of the social ladder, when they get the chance, they play the same yeah. part. Because you know again, they are looking to see who is looking at them and who is adulating them. And so it's a vicious circle. Um, not sure what causes it, whether it's our poverty or a throwback from our African way of doing things before now. I'm actually going to say something a little bit controversial. I'm not sure. Yeah, I know, you're always a controversial person. <laughs> I'm not sure you can well, describe nice. this to uh, our African traditional mindset or something. No, nah, exactly. Because I personally, I think this is actually a, con a, a colonial creation where. Yeah, yeah that's true. We, we saw a class of people who were like gods. They were untouchable. Fantastic. And somehow that became our self-actualization. We wanted, we wanted to be like, like them. them. And I think that has been replicated in the kind of leadership we've been, we've been mm. throwing up across Africa since mm. the colonial era. We so replaced true. the white colonialists with the true. ones that look yes, like us. That's true. That's mm. true. So, so, so well, true. Let me even be controversial then, since we're being controversial. I don't actually think it's to do with either colonial or whatever, or even poverty. I think it's just regarding superficial material things and making them more than they are. So you've gone and created your own world system of what is, because man needs some measure so they can be, they can it say, okay, if you're here, you know, whether it's class or race, right, exactly. and then I'm better than you because I've measured you here. All these superficial measurements, that's what people are looking for. And so that then creates a world where you can now put yourself, you say, do you know what level? You're not up to my level and I'm above your level. Advocacy can be about restraining the tendency to self-destruct. Here's where you keep us in check. On Raising the Bar, Ada Brown says, I've been thinking the exact same th thoughts recently. We need to raise the bar. 
The people behave as they do due to prolonged conditioning. Reconditioning will change them eventually. It might take time and sacrifice, but if change were ever to come, it has to be this way. Dialing back to take comments on the episode River, Rivers of wicked, Wickedness, Phantom 2K10 says, Forever grateful for this platform and the great people working for it. Thank you for being unapologetic and resilient in speaking out against the wickedness in this country. Please continue to do what you do without wavering. You will be remembered in this country's history. May Olodumare bless and keep you great people. God bless you too, my brother. Anthony G. Anthony says, Correction to a comment made on land law in the UK. The lady on the panel likened land decree or law in Nigeria to land law in the UK. To begin with, land law in England and Wales is different to the land law in Scotland and Northern Ireland. The England and Wales law grants, grants indefinite ownership to the freehold title holder until the crown, that is the queen, demands return of the title, which rarely happens in time of peace. Now, the situation is different when it comes to leasehold titles. The period of length of ownership of a property under leasehold consideration is determined in the contract and ownership of the property belongs to the title holder. Ekene was recalling what she was taught some several years ago now, which effectively says, under the legal system, the monarch as head of state owns the superior interest in all land in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Reference the crownestate.co.uk. The crown apparently even owns all swans, so think twice before you accidentally kill a swan. Keep the conversation going on our social media platforms on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. I'm next after the break.